What if Andrusarchus didn't go extinct? You might be wondering what Andrusarchus is. Still, the information about Andrusarchus is one fact you would want to know about if you're the kind of person that loves knowledge and discoveries. While Andrusarchus is not a modern time fact, it might interest you to know that Andrusarchus is a genus mammal that lived in Inner Mongolia. In case you're wondering what Inner Mongolia means, it is tagged as the inner region of China. You do not know this, but the skull of Andrusarchus is now displayed in the American Museum of Natural History in New York. This means that it has some essence, right? One notable fact to note is that the Andrusarchus was given its name because it was dedicated to a unique name, which is Andrews. As you might know, Sarkis, the surname, was given because of the place that it was found, Inner Mongolia. This mammal is known as the largest terrestrial carnivore, and the reason for this is because of the size of its skull. The characteristics of the Andrusarchus include three incisors, one canine, four premolars, and three molars, which are apparent on the side of its jaw. This mammal features make it unique and this is more and more reason it's worthy of being examined in today's video. Andrusarchus has the traits that attest to the fact that it could have been the most vicious form of mammal. This is because it feeds on omnivores, which is why it's essential to note some of those possibilities that stipulate what they could have done if Andrusarchus was still thriving in today's world. Before we dive in, don't forget to connect with us. Subscribe to our channel and smash that notification button to be the first to get notified when we upload new content. And if you enjoy the video, you know what to do. Like and leave us a comment because you are a fantastic person. Thanks. Killers of Omnivores Recent theories about the Andrusarchus have indicated that the teeth of the Andrusarchus are blunt. This is because of the fossils that were found on them. And the diet of the mammal could have included omnivores, bones, and rooted plants. Researchers have indicated further that this choice in the diet is because the animal's appearance could have scared off predators, leaving them to the leftovers of animals that have been killed and other plants that they've scavenged for. What comes to your mind when you think about the size of the Andrusarchus? A pretty guess? Antelopes? Rabbits? Hares and the likes, right? Well, recent researchers have indicated facts alongside your guess, and this is all the more reason why you might be right. Feeders on large sea animals In case you don't know, many economies generate so much money from whaling. As of the year 2012, it has been said to have developed over $2 billion from countries worldwide. While this might not be the focal point of our research, you need to know that if the Andrusarchus exists, its enormous jaws, which have been discerned to be the most extensive kind of jaws ever found in mammals. Suppose this fact has to be combined with the location where the large mammal fossils were found. In that case, it's concluded that some of the large animals that the Andrusarchus fed on include whales, shellfishes, hard-shelled turtles, and brontotheres, which were located around Central Asia. In case you don't know, brontotheres are now extinct, and it's perceived that one of the reasons they no longer exist is because Andrusarchus fed on them. You might be wondering how this is possible. Well, they fed on both the carcass and live segments of the brontotheres, up and until their extinction. In case you're wondering what brontotheres animals are, history has it that they used to be as large as the size of pigs, but as evolution would have them, they began to grow up to the size of modern-day elephants. Wow, right? The Andrusarchus fed on them in all of the phases of their evolution, and ironically, they no longer exist. If the Andrusarchus thrive in modern times, the implication is that some of the whales that you find in large aquariums and elephants in many parts of Africa would not be in existence. Is it all a play out on the survival chain, right? Well, thanks to evolution, they no longer exist. Feeders on humans This might seem like a piece of information that sounds like a nightmare, but history states things back to the fact that there was a time when Andrusarchus fed on humans. 
Research, according to Shiru's prediction, said that a group of people searched for some of the behavioral traits of Andrew Sarkis. Shiru's prediction stated that no less than 10 people were killed on the first night when they first encountered a wild beast group. While there might not be a ton of proofs to this event, one thing that you need to bear in mind is the fact that the Andrew Sarkis has a large jaw, and this means that the type of teeth bones that they would possess would be large enough to tear apart the flesh of animals. By animals, you already know that humans are higher animals. What does this mean to you? Well, a face-to-face -face encounter with Andrew Sarkis would seem like a face-to-face -face event with death. Whether such a person would survive or not would be a decision for fate and circumstances. Killers of all forms of life In a recent analysis of the Andrew Sarkis, it was discerned that they share similar traits with the group of wild animals, which is known as the Entelodonts. Have you ever had an encounter with a group of wild pigs? If you had, then you must know for a fact that they're not animals that you can joke with. Recent research has indicated that Entelodonts include wild pigs that are aggressive to every piece of animal or plant that might come in their way. When the analysis was done on wild pigs, it's usually done from a far end. Do you know the reason for this? They are fantastic and vicious. The Andrew Sarkis are compared to wild pigs because they don't spare any life they come into contact with. Please take a mental image from what they might seem in the wild. Imagine one Andrew Sarkis in a community of humans who do not have a means of rescuing themselves. It sounds like bloodstains all around a city. Well, this is as good as accurate. Killers of Lower-Sized Mammals when trying to relate with what category of mammals the Andrew Sarkis falls into, the best description you would find anywhere is that they are large mammals. But who would have thought that large mammals feed on smaller mammals? Well, Andrew Sarkis have the tendency. Another analysis on the Andrew Sarkis describes them as being in the mammals class, which can best be described as trisodontines. This is because they have traits that make them seem similar to animals in the wild that have three dentitions, hence the reason they're tagged as trisodontine animals. In case you're wondering what other groups of animals might fall into this category, our search found wolves to be in this category. Here's the bigger gist. Andrew Sarkis feeds on deer, bison, moose, and other animals. Word has it that they could nibble on a pound of flesh that is way beyond 20 pounds at a single bite, this means that if the Andrew Sarkis were to exist in modern times, they could munch on an entirety of a jungle, including a lion in a single year. Wow, this sounds like a nightmare. Monkeys in wrenches. When you think about monkeys, what is the first thing that comes to mind about them being in the wild? Hopping from one tree to yet another. Well, it's not only monkeys that could do this. Even Andrew Sarkis can. An analysis of the fossils of Andrew Sarkis stipulated that the animal tended to shoot out wrenches from one tree to another, just the way that monkeys would. Imagine a large animal, like the size of an elephant, hopping from one tree to another, competing against monkeys with as much speed as them. Well, anything that jumps from one tree to another seems like prey to the Andrew Sarkis. If this doesn't mean anything to you, it should be able to tell you that Andrew Sarkis can catch up on your excited monkeys and baboons in the wild, as well as feed on them like you would a bowl of your choice pork meat in a Chinese restaurant. Honestly, thinking about the possibility of having an Andrew Sarkis around right now seems like another reason to dial 911. Feeding on small-sized aquatic animals Normally, one would have envisaged that the Andrew Sarkis would not be the kind of mammal to feed on small aquatic animals, like the fishes that you cook in your kitchen. But one of the groups in which the Andrew Sarkis is said to belong to is the Artiodactyl. And just in case you don't know what kind of animals fall within this group, the one that should come to mind is the regular hippopotamus. A question that should be on your mind right now is do hippopotamuses feed on small fishes? A little search on this mammal would give you the straight answer you need, but to save you some stress, they do. The Andrusarchus feeds on small aquatic animals, and this means they could pose a significant threat to marine life, if they existed in modern times. You'd better not be fishing on any day the Andrusarchus is out, 
You know what this means. Did any of these facts freak you out? Which of the points were you triggered by? Is there something we didn't state in this video about Andrew Sarkis? Let us know what you think in the comments section and be sure to join the conversation about Andrew Sarkis. We can't wait to hear from you. And with that, we're at the end of this video. If you enjoyed the video and the astonishing facts about Andrew Sarkis in this video, be sure to hit that like button and leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and give that notification bell a smashing hit to join the exclusive VIP list whenever we upload new content.